What's going on guys? In this video, I want to go over uh, threading events. Um, I want to explain exactly what they are and how to utilize them and then we'll go over some examples. Uh, so when we need threads to communicate with each other, uh, we can use something called uh, event objects. So event objects pretty much communicate through uh, flags and switches. So when one thread does something, you can activate a switch and the other thread can react to the activated switch. So it's very similar to queue in that you have one thread waiting for something to be put into the queue and another thread putting something into the queue. And if, if there's nothing in the queue, one thread is just going to be waiting. But this is a, a little different because in this case, it's just a, a single event. I'll go over specific examples later on so you get an idea of how they're different. All right, an event object, right? So let's just let me just show you how to create an event. So what you do is uh, you just call the uh, threading module. So to create an event, it's just event equals threading dot event. All right. So an event object, in this case, we created an event object, manages an internal flag that can be set to true with the set method and reset to false with the clear method. So you can be set it can be set to true with the set method. So this is essentially setting setting the flag to true, and then to clear it, what you can do is utilize event.clear. So event event.set is just setting the flag to true. It's giving the uh, sort of like the green signal, and event.clear is sort of giving the red signal. It's uh, setting the flag to false. Then you have a, a wait me a wait method that blocks until the flag is true. So this is the wait method event dot wait and this wait method will block until it sees event dot set or until it sees event dot set is true you can check if an event is set using the event dot set so if this is true or we have or, or event dot set is called then this uh, event dot wait won't block anymore so just to reiterate I'm going to explain uh, maybe a simpler way it might have been confusing but Event.wait sort of uh, blocks the thread from moving forward or from progressing until event.set has been called. So event.set event pretty much uh, sets the flag, an internal flag, to true. So once this is set, event, once, once this is called, this stops blocking and we can progress with the, the code or with the threading function. Event.clear sort of sets the flag to false. So if this is called, then this prevents uh, event that wait from moving forward. So event that wait essentially will stop blocking when event that clear is called. So remember, um, event objects are a simple way to communicate between threads safely. Uh, these internal flags allow you to communicate uh, between threads, and I'm going to show you guys now a, a clear example of that. Let me see. I'll just create a new file. New file. All right. So now I, I want to show you examples. So let's just, uh, first we're going to import a few things. Uh, import Q, import threading, uh, import NumPy as MP. Um, NumPy, I'm just going to use the, um, the uh, random function from NumPy. So if you guys don't know much about NumPy, don't worry about it. Uh, I may eventually go into it. Um, there's a lot of videos online. I'll see. All right. So now we're going to create uh, two different functions. Uh, one is going to be the flag. So let's see, time that sleep. And one is going to be the flag function. So in this, we're going to uh, let me just go over the, let me just pull this out. Uh, so you guys remember the event stuff. Okay, uh, copy pull. Oh, where is it? Um, here we go. All right. Uh, so this was the event related stuff. Uh, control one. All right. So the first thing, I'm going to use this as an internal flag. I'm going to create this function, which is going to sleep for three seconds, and then we're going to set. So remember, event that set, uh, it gives you the pretty much the green light. It allows whatever flag is, whatever thread is waiting to go. Okay. So, so give, this gives the green light. I'm going to say starting countdown, um, time that sleep seven seconds. So. It gives the green light. Now it's it's starting the countdown, and it's going to sleep for seven seconds, and then it's going to say event. Uh, sorry, 
event is cleared. So it's very similar to a traffic light. It gives you the green light, but this time it's going to give you for seven seconds. And then it's going to call the event.clear. So once the event.clear is called, that means uh, the other thread is going to block. All right, so now that's it for this function. And now we're going to have um, a start operations function. So event operations, I mean, uh, start operation. This is start operation. So we're going to have an event that wait as the first line. So this is going to wait for us to get the, the green light. Once we get the green light, we can call this uh, line while event while the green light is true. So while event is set, all right. So while event is set, we want to just print random starting random integer task. Okay, starting random integer task. And then we're going to say x equals mp dot random dot uh, rand int between 130. So it's just pulling out a random number. Once it pulls out a random number, we're just going to sleep for uh, 0.5 seconds because if I don't do this, the output just going to be crazy. It's just going to be tons of numbers. Uh, the number is going to be outputted like every uh, millisecond. And then. Um, We'll just have something like if x equals uh, 29, print true. All right, let me just uh, explain this code a little bit. We have one thread that's going to call a flag, right? It's going to sleep for three seconds and then uh, set this. It's sort of like a, a giving the green light. Okay, go ahead, get started with the work. So this operation, right, it cannot start. It's not going to start until it gets the green light. So this event that wait is saying, we're going to wait until we get the green light. Once we get the green light, we'll start. Once it gets the green lit, so once event.set is called, um, we're able to do these operations. So here, while event.set is just making sure that um, as long as event.set event.set has been called, you're gonna, we're going to do this operation. So this while loop will work as long as event.set is has been called. So it's going to go through these and continue to do this, continue to do this, continue to do this until uh, this is called event.clear. Once event.clear is called, then this is going to be false. Event.set is going to be false, and we will break out of this loop. So to check if we broke out of this loop, um, we just give a statement something like event has been cleared, uh, random operation stops. All right. So these are the two functions. Now, the next thing, of course, we have to do is just um, create all the instances of threads. And that's something we've done multiple times. If you need to know, if you need a recap on the threading videos, uh, just go back to the, the beginning of this playlist. I'll put the links for the threading, uh, threading videos in the description. All right. So event equals threading.event. This is how we create an event object. Let's see, event equals threading.event. Now we want to create two threads, T1 going to be threading uh, dot thread and then you have target equals uh, sorry target e oh, I can't type today equals flag uh, there's no uh, attributes parameters so we don't have to worry about anything else now t through t2 is going to equal uh, thread oh sorry target equals start operation all right, so this looks good. Um, right. Anyway, here I misspelled. Okay, target equals flag. Ah, I spelled operations wrong here. All right, so we take we took care of that syntax problem, and now I just uh, want to start both of these threads, and this should be good to go. I think this is good. So t dot start ah t one. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, Spider for the, helping me out with that. Okay, so I just want to explain to you guys that um, remember there's a time that's sleep. So these two threads are going to be running concurrently, but um, thread two is not going to start because it's being blocked, and thread one is going to be sleeping for two seconds, uh, three seconds before it starts the first uh, before it it uh, sets the event. So we essentially we have three seconds of nothing. Once the event has been set, we'll get a, a print counting start down and then we'll start getting these starting random integer task and then once the event has been cleared 
you know, after seven seconds, then we're going to get this message. So that's the way, pretty much, um, that's a way of controlling your operations by events. One event uh, sets off a switch, and the second event gets the go, the green light, and starts its operations. I could do this multiple times if I want, for I in range 10, or uh, I could have this loop, uh, sort of this on-off going on indefinitely, but in this case, I just want to show you guys a quick example. So let's just run this, and all right. Okay, we got an error. Target, all right, target, okay. Let's just run this again. All right, it's running. So three seconds, nothing's happening. All right, so now it's starting. Starting countdown, starting random integer task. All right, so it's gonna do this for seven seconds now. Boom, boom, up, oh, event is cleared. So once the event has been cleared, that means we're, gonna, we're going to be calling this event.clear, and that triggers a signal for us to get out of this loop. All right, so that's it, yeah. So hopefully um, uh, that gives you a little idea of how events work. Um, so that's it for this video. I will see you guys next time.